enigmatic and imposing, Convento do Spinheiro rises on top of a hill just two kilometers outside the city of Évora. The monastery, now renovated as the result of an architectural intervention of great technical rigor and worthy respect for the historical building, contains a magnificent hotel with 92 rooms and suites. The hotel provides guests with a high level of comfort and discretion in communion with the memory of the convent's legacy, resulting in an indelible spiritual experience. This is due to the careful recovery of old structures and building materials, safeguarding the historic dimension of the architectural elements and the respective cultural and religious significance in harmony with the new areas required for the new functions of the hotel services. The legend says that around 1300, the Virgin Mary appeared to a shepherd on a burning thorn bush. The poor shepherd, won over by the miracle, sold his flock and from the Moorish lookout where he lived, built a small hermitage which he decorated with an image of the apparition. Being close to the city, the hermitage attracted popular devotion from those living both inside and outside the city walls. Soon after came the idea to build a monastery. The dream was achieved in 1458 when the bishop Don Vasco Perdigão obtained financial support from the then king Don Alfonso V also devoted to the Virgin of Nossa Senhora do Espinheiro. As well as the convent, the king ordered the construction of a lodging area where he could stay whenever he decided to pray to Our Lady of Espinheiro during his visits to Évora. The existence of this lodging place, where nowadays the hotel's best suites are located, seem to foresee the construction of the present hotel. It is one of the most prestigious in contemporary Portugal and is classified as a national monument. King Dom João II, one of the most brilliant Portuguese kings, also called Príncipe Perfeito or the Perfect Prince, held court here in 1481. The affection of the kings for this monastery also explains the amount of nobles and aristocrats who visited it. Many decided to make this their last resting place. The main altar of the convent became the most illustrious pantheon of high nobility south of the River Tagus. This saintly place is also particular in that Frei Carlos, one of the most talented Portuguese painters of the 16th century, once professed his faith here. He set up a workshop in the convent and produced a large body of works, which can now be found in the Museum of Art Antigua in Lisbon, the Museum of Évora, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, leaving the marble frames empty in the Chapel of the Dead Lord. The wall 
walls of the convent's refectory and kitchen, which once echoed the silence of meals accompanied by the litanies and prayers given by one of the brothers from the pulpit, are now part of an original bar which invites guests to live moments of pure tranquility. Cloisters, built at the time of King Don Manuel I, can be used on a daily basis or in multiple cultural events which mingle harmoniously with the spirit of the discoveries that have never left this magnificent place. In the hotel's historic areas, one can visit the crypt of the famous Portuguese chronicler, Garcia de Resende. He was an outstanding figure of the Renaissance, having been personal secretary to three kings. He also led the embassy of King Don Manuel I to Rome in 1514. In the restaurant Divinus, the old convent winery, where today one can still find majestic large pots. One can taste genuine Alentejo gastronomy with a touch of sophistication and refinement. of Alentejo gastronomy. First centuries, pies de cabeza, reguefes, biscuits and other specialities were produced from the convent oven, delighting the Geronimus monks which lived in this community. Extra virgin olive oil is made from the hundreds of olive trees which grow in the hotel gardens and is served to the guests during meals. This is a tribute to the old olive press of which some parts still exist. In recent decades, wine has become an icon of the Alentejo region. Its best example is the legendary Peramanca produced by the Eugenio de Almeida Foundation. The foundation was set up by the benefactor Engineiro Vasco Eugenio de Almeida, who apart from the Cartucha winery, donated a priceless historic legacy and buildings to the city, which can now all be visited. The cult of Bacchus can be found in the old Gothic system, which has now been transformed into the hotel's wine cellar, a place to be visited. Here, our sommelier invites visitors to increase their knowledge of wine and to try out this valuable nectar, making this moment an unforgettable experience. <laughs> of God. 
gardens, call for pleasant walks and contain a varied number of facilities, among which we can recommend the Diana Spa, which for three consecutive years has contributed towards the hotel being awarded the prize as the best Portuguese spa resort. a room where you can feel the romance of the cinema of the 50s or for all the pervading history of one of the more emblematic rooms of the convent. This is a place which is full of emotions, where the young ones are invited to plant roots for the future.